A-level first principles. Prove from first principles that the differential of sine 2x is 2 cos 2x, and you may assume these relationships, which basically, which basically come from the small angle approximations, okay? So, uh, the basic proof is doing it for sine x and proving it differentiates to cos x, and in year one, we only do this with like x squared and these just simple polynomials, right? So let's just remind ourselves of the first principles formula. So the first principles formula tells us that f dash x is the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And in our case, f of x is sine 2x. So what would f of x plus h be? All you're doing is you're replacing x with x plus h, so it becomes sine of 2x plus h. Okay, I'm going to put a double bracket here because this is the whole angle, isn't it? So we're going to substitute these into these. Now, we know from experience, or should know from experience, that the way we do this is we need to use the addition rule. Okay? We need to expand this out because we want sine 2x, right? I see the 2x. I also have a 2h, okay? So I'm going to have to expand those brackets, okay? So I get uh, sine of 2x plus 2h. Because some students think here you need to use the double angle IDs. But we don't use the double angle IDs because if you use that, you're still going to get x plus h. You have 2 something, yeah? So you'll have uh, 2 sine of this, cos of this, which we don't want. So we're going to do the addition of this. The addition rule for sine goes sine cos sine cos. So we're going to get sine 2x cos 2h. Sine keeps the sine the same. Sine 2h cos 2x. Sine cos sine cos and then we just change the angle. Let's take this and this and sub into here. So my f dash is the limit as h tends to 0 of, we had sine 2x uh, cos 2h plus sine 2h cos 2x minus, minus f of x, which is sine 2x all over h. Capping, you guys can just about see that. Yeah, let's go. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to collect like terms and factorize. Can you see the sine 2x and the sine 2x? Pretend they are next to each other. We can factorize out the sine 2x. So we get the limit as h tends to 0 of sine 2x cos 2x cos 2h, sorry, minus 1 plus sine 2h cos 2x all over h. The next thing we need to do is we need to split that fraction, okay? So I'm going to have this, which is one term, divided by h, plus this, which is one term, divided by h, okay? And another thing we can do is we can break up these two terms. You know when we integrate x plus x squared? dx, and you just immediately say that's a half x squared and a third x to the power of 3. What you're doing is you're, you're basically integrating both of these separately. You're integrating this and integrating this. Here we're doing the limit of this and the limit of that. Okay? So I'm not going to do too much in one go because, and I'll, I'll show you guys what you can kind of skip. So this step I'm doing now, you can actually skip as well. I'm going to show you because I'm being a good boy in it. So we have sine 2x cos 2h minus 1 all over h. So I have the limit of that as a split fraction plus the limit as h tends to 0 of sine 2h cos 2h uh, cos 2x all over h. Okay? Now the next thing is this depends on h because we're considering as h tends to 0. 
Now, just like when you're integrating 4x, you guys would immediately say 2x squared, I hope. That 4 is not dependent on x. So you're not integrating that 4. You can take that 4 outside of the integral. And then you can say it's 4, lots of a half x squared, which gives you 2x squared. So look inside here. What does not depend on h? What is independent of h? What is not changing as the h value changes? That's the sine 2x. And that can come outside. So we get sine 2x of the limit as h tends to 0 of cos 2h minus 1 all over h plus, then here, it's the cos 2x, which is not dependent. And then we're left with sine 2h over h. Now, this form is uh, this, okay? And here, I just didn't have space. I basically have a limit as h tends to 0 on both of them, okay? So what does that mean? Cos kh minus 1 over h tends to 0. Cos 2h minus 1 over h, so it's the same form. It's just k is 2. So when k is 2, so by the way, as this, the, um, the sentence you can skip is this one. You can go straight from here to here. So when k is 2, we can say using the assumption, which remember comes from the small angle approximation, the limit as h tends to 0 of cos 2h minus 1 over h tends to 0. And this limit tends to what? Here I said it tends to just the value of k because remember, sine theta is approximately theta. So sine kh is approximately kh, the h is cancel, you're left with k. So this limit just becomes 2. Okay? You're just left with the 2h over h, which is just 2. So therefore, we are left with, it equals sine 2x multiplied, so a big multiply, this thing we just said is 0, and, so plus, cos 2x, big multiply, this thing we just said becomes 2. And that is 0, and we're left with 2 cos 2x. And that is now proved. Obviously, the uh, sine 2x is a much simpler uh, proof because you don't need to explain all this. Uh, you can just use it directly. Here, I was a bit ambiguous in it, giving it kx. If I put them exactly as 2, then you could directly quote without having to say this. But yeah. The proofs are basically the same. So guys, if you learned something today, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, details are in the description. And feel free to join the Loon Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.